Hello and welcome to the analysis of GIPMAT 24. GIPMAT, as all of you know, is the entrance exam for the five-year integrated programs in management at IIM Bodh Gaya and IIM Jammu. Now, GIPMAT follows IIM Rotak and IIM Indore, or rather IIM Jammu and IIM Bodh Gaya follow IIM Rotak and IIM Indore in terms of having launched the five-year IPM programs and they have their own entrance test GIPMAT. So today in this video, we will look at the analysis of the GIPMAT exam that was conducted on 6th June. And we will see how the questions were from, from each of the sections, what the expected cutoffs were, what the cutoffs were last year, so that those of you who have taken the exam this year, you will understand how you may be faring in this exam. So let's jump in right away. Now, let's start off by looking at the GIPMAT pattern. Uh, the pattern, thankfully, there were no surprises compared to last year, right? So, the pattern was exactly the same as last year. The pattern was, there were a total of 100 questions, 33 questions from quantitative aptitude, 33 questions from the second section, DI and LR, data interpretation and logical reasoning, and 34 questions from the VARC section, verbal ability and reading comprehension, adding up to a total of 100 questions. Now. If you look at the time limit, overall the exam was for two and a half hours. So two and a half hours, 150 minutes, 100 questions. So therefore, in terms of the number of questions versus the time available, the exam can be set to be a relatively simpler exam in terms of the overall time available per question, so to say. Also, what helps students in this exam is the fact that there are no sectional limits, sectional time limits, so to say. Now, how does this help? It helps because if I am strong in quant, I can save some time on quant and I can allocate that time to the other two sections. Whereas when there are time limits, each section kind of becomes its, I know, a test in itself, right? So therefore, whatever time that I save, I cannot allocate it to any other section. So the advantage in GIPMAT that students have is that there are no sectional time limits. So that is kind of a helpful factor. Students who are weak in one area, can benefit by allocating time, saving time in the other areas and allocating time to this area, right? Now this becomes important. <coughs> this becomes important because there are sectional cutoffs that both I am both Gaya and I am Jammu look at. Now sectional cutoff means that unless I score a certain level uh, above a certain level, then I will not be considered for the admission process. So that means that if I am weak in a certain section and if there is fixed time for that section, then I can only do perform to a limited extent in that section. However, because there are no sectional time limits, I can allocate my time here to my weaker section and therefore score better, hoping to cross the sectional cutoff and also overall improve the score uh, at the overall level as well, right? Now, what is the marking scheme? The marking scheme is that each right answer gives me four marks, which means 100 questions in the paper, four marks per right answer, which means the total score that is possible, the maximum score that is possible is 400 in the exam. However, there is negative marking as well, one negative mark for each wrong answer. So let's now look at the detailed sectional analysis for each of the uh, sections, starting off with the quantitative aptitude section. Now, the difficulty level overall this year can be said to be easy moderate. The question distribution overall uh, difficulty level composition across question that we have seen in this section was very similar to last year, right? And there were no too difficult, uncrackable, undoable questions. All this is obviously based on student feedback. Students who have taken the test have come back and shared their feedback with us. And this analysis is based on their feedback. So there, there were no surprises in terms of new, there's no question, new question types that are seen, overall pattern remained the same because the total number of questions was 33 last year, same question, uh, same number of questions this year also, and similar question distribution across topics. Now, if you look at question distribution, let's look at this table which will give us the distribution across topics, across the major areas. What are the areas? If you look at algebra, the areas like functions, progressions, etc. So the approximation that you see there, four to five questions, because we don't have the exact actual paper available yet. As of now, we are giving a question range for each of these areas. So as you can see, there were questions, uh, the single area which had the maximum number of questions, it can be said uh, geometry, and menstruation seems to be that area this year for very closely followed by numbers at five to six questions and the other topics like pure maths topics which consist of pnc probability etc 
or arithmetic which consists of time and distance time and work etc they were also there a good number of questions but as you can see the number of topics under each of those areas are a lot more compared to a single topic geometry and menstruation which had eight to nine questions so that way numbers in geometry overall can be said to have around uh, 15 questions so to say a maximum of 15 questions so even on the lower side if you count some 12 13 to 15 questions that's more than uh, clearly more than one third of the paper right 11 is one third of the paper so one third of the paper more than one third of the paper from just two areas so that's a bit of skew overall in terms of the coverage but in, in terms of coverage of topics in the exam however because a similar queue was expected last year also the students preparing for the exam particularly those of you who have seen the analysis of the last year who have no understood how the paper last year was they would have kind of uh, not been surprised so to say and particularly those time time students who have been exposed to the kind of marks and material that we provided to them all of them would definitely not happen any surprises in terms of the overall area coverage right so then let's move on to the second section the second section is the dlr section data interpretation and logical reasoning here the difficulty level is moderate again similar to what was seen last year again no surprises similar question breakup and difficulty level as was seen last year with 33 questions in total and this is the question breakup now question breakup as you can see across lr there are multiple topics logical connectors series seating arrangements analogies blood relation direction sense each of the areas has been covered right however if you look at the maximum coverage the maximum coverage seems to have come from seating arrangements now seating arrangements because of the kind of assurance that we got from a couple of students we didn't put a range there but maybe uh, if you want to take it with a pinch of salt you can say that there could be around five to six questions or four to six questions in seating arrangements regardless that is one area which def definitely seems to be more than four right whereas if in all the other areas but for data interpretation that you see there but for data interpretation here in all the other areas you can see that the uh, here in all the other areas you can see that the maximum number is four but here we are saying it is six so even if you want to take it to the pinch of salt you can say that it is some four to six or four to seven the minimum number is four right so therefore seating arrangements seem to have been given a bigger seat so to say no pun intended there uh, and along with that there are two sets of data interpretation now here whether it is two sets or whether it is one set with a standalone question that bit is not particularly clear as of now because we have as i said we are only working on this based on student feedback but net net there seems to be around five to six questions from data interpretation and around let's say five to six questions from seating arrangement so these two being the areas where the maximum number of questions came from in this section now that said students who have focused on all the areas of lr including smaller areas like blood relations directions and etc they would have been able to maximize their, their score at the end of the day the target for the students would be to maximize their score which means any question from any area they should be unable to attempt if not solve completely right so for me to be able to attempt the question i should be able to i should be comfortable with at least the basics of those areas so those students who have covered the basics of these areas taken marks regularly done their analysis across all areas they would have been pretty comfortable because again as you can see the difficulty level is moderate so we're not saying that the difficulty level is very high which means there is no unsolvable question per se right so that way also given that the time available per question is not 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 very tight right around uh, 100 questions we have two and a half hours right so therefore in general one can say that the overall difficulty level has been moderate with no surprises compared to last year let's move on to the third section the verbal ability and rc section again here the difficulty level is moderate while some students are saying that some passages one of the passages at least has been slightly tough some students have said that maybe it's not that tough not really uncrackable kind of thing so net net we can say that it is moderate so we cannot call it easy neither can we call it moderate particularly when we do not have access to the actual paper yet right number of questions as you can see is 34 in total let's look at the distribution now the distribution is there are fill in the blank questions the grammar grammar is the lion's share of the questions are from grammar here and from rc now in grammar there are different kinds of questions active voice passive voice questions identifying the parts of speech or uh, what is the verb what is the noun and also 
general sentence correction, correction questions where a sentence with an error is given and the student is ex students are expected to spot the error in the question right and there are vocab based questions also two kinds of vocab based questions e idioms synonyms and antonyms is one kind and spelling questions the spelling is not strictly vocab per se but yeah unless you know the word you cannot you may not be able to spell it correctly so that way we can categorize it under vocab there are para formation questions or as they are popularly called para jumbles or sentence jumbles right and there are fill in the blank questions which are there so this is the composition of uh, the vrc section the rc passages have apparently not been too tough to read so therefore that is also one more worry taken off the students heads so those of uh, you who have been able to kind of keep a cool head understand the given passage clearly would have been able to score well in this section so let's now quickly jump to the cutoffs now if you look at the cutoffs let's look at what happened last year now what happened last year we look at i am both the cutoffs now there is these are cutoffs across reservation categories as you see here we have general category cutoff at 327 now 327 four marks per question that means 80 roughly 82 questions 82 plus 80 by 82 plus because there would be some wrong answers right so i need a net of 82 right answers so even if i let's say take my accuracy to be around 90 percent if my accuracy is around 90 percent so let me 10 percent errors so let's say roughly let's take 82 plus 8 so i will need 90 attempts overall so with 90 attempts and 10 percent errors so that will give me 81 questions right 81 right so slightly above 90 is what would be required for the general category students this is again last year's numbers now why are we looking at last year's numbers this year's paper is similar to last year in terms of pattern as we saw in terms of question type coverage in terms of area coverage and also in terms of difficulty level so which means the cutoffs that we've seen last year are expected to be here be there this year as well right the seats number of seats have remained the same so unless the institute decides to call more students for the interviews right so this would be, could be the uh, cutoff numbers now there is this sng what is sng supernumerary girls now where does that come from it comes from okay before we discuss that let me also discuss the sectional cutoff the sectional cutoff for i am both there is 30 percentile so students scoring above 30 percentile in each section only they would be considered for the admission process so I may have scored full in all the other sections, in two sections, but if I score less than 30 percentile in the third, then I will not be considered for the admission process. So this is a key factor to be kept in mind. Now let's go back and discuss the supernumerary girls. What is this? In I am both there, 70 percent of the seats are gender neutral. So because 70 percent of the seats are gender neutral, first admission is considered only for the 70 percent students. Then if it is observed that these 70 percent students have an optimal gender ratio, then the remaining 30% of the seats will also be treated as gender neutral and admissions will be given. If that is not the case, meaning if there is a, an issue with the gender ratio, then the remaining 30% of the seats will be offered as a combination of gender neutral and supernumerary girls. So which means the uh, female students will get an advantage in case of the first 70% not showing a proper or acceptable, not acceptable as per I am both gay as admission authorities. As per them, if it's not acceptable, then they would be an advantage to girls for, towards the for the 30% of the uh, overall seat, the remaining 30% of the seats, so to say, right? Now, as I said earlier, the cutoff is expected to remain the same this year too, based on the difficulty level, coverage, paper pattern, etc. So let's now look at I am Jammu. What is expected? What can be expected from I am Jammu as far as cutoffs go? Now, if you look at the weightage, I am Jammu has a slightly different uh, selection process. The, they have given upfront a gender diversity score of 5%. So, GIFMAT score, if I am a female student, 90% of the weightage comes from my GIFMAT score and I get an additional 5% weightage for uh, the fact that I am a female, right? Male students do not get that 5%. So, gender weightage, there is a gender diversity score right away that comes in here for I am Jammu right at the beginning. And then they also have sectional cutoffs. Now here the sectional cutoffs are not as low. There for I am Jammu, the sectional cutoff is 30% across. For I am both there, sorry. But for I am Jammu, as you can see, sectional cutoffs vary across the reservation categories that we see. Right. Now those who satisfy these, 
will be then considered for the admission process. Now, what is the cutoff of IIM Jammu? IIM Jammu has not released, put up a number officially last year. We don't have that number available. However, given that both IIM Jammu and IIM Bodh Gaya are kind of at the same level, one can expect the cutoffs to be the same as IIM Bodh Gaya. IIM Bodh Gaya, these numbers that you see for IIM Bodh Gaya, they are official numbers put up by IIM Bodh Gaya on their website, which is not these numbers, such numbers are not available for IIM Jammu, but we can kind of expect them or we can guess that the numbers could be similar, there could be minor differences here and there, but broadly at the same range. So the numbers this year, uh, last year was 327 for the general category for IIM Bodh Gaya. So for IIM Jammu also, they're expected to be at the same level, right? So with that, we will end this analysis. All the best for all of you who have taken JIPMAT and hope that you get into one of the IIMs Jammu or IIM Bodh Gaya, or if you have written IPM Indoor or Rotak, if any of those is your dream campuses, we wish that you get into your dream campus. All the best.